Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. You are here for part six of my ex-pastor story. This is kind of the culmination of everything at this episode. The one that you've all been waiting for, the infamous recording. Now, I've spoken to a lawyer, everything looks good, but before we get to all of that, I just want to talk to you guys about NordVPN. Now, you guys know that I'm a huge proponent for privacy, internet privacy specifically. I live my life on the internet. I do all my work there, I do websites, I surf, I watch television, I watch sports, I do everything I do online. And it's really important for you to protect your privacy. If you didn't know that, a lot of people don't, a lot of people reach out to me and ask me what a VPN is. I've actually had multiples of messages. I'm just like, look, it's so simple. I'm gonna explain it to you like you're five, okay? Your computer specifically, if you have just the one computer, not your house, not your internet connection, your computer, it has an address, right? And when you surf the internet, the government can track you. Your cable company can track you. Your internet provider can track you and, and see what you're doing. But what a VPN does is it can put your computer in one of 60 countries in over 5,500 super fast servers around the world, which means they can't track you. They can't see what you're doing because your privacy matters. It's important to you. It can be really invasive and it, it just it just doesn't it just doesn't feel right. And so that's why I use a VPN. And I've been using Nord since way before they sponsored me. I've had Nord on my computers all over my house and my phones up to six in a house actually um, for years and years and years. And I swear by them. So as soon as I turn my computer on, the first thing that pops up is Nord. Where do you want to be today? Well, let's go to, I don't know, UK. And you can watch Netflix from the UK. It just, it, it's just a really powerful little tool that's super easy to use, very, very simple to install, and you just, you're off. Because you guys are gonna be spending a lot of money at Christmas on your kids and all that stuff coming up soon. You don't want them, you know when you buy something online and then it's like all of a sudden you get ads for it for like months? I, I remember one time my wife was shopping for underwear and uh, I just kept getting ads galore on my Facebook. And this is the time I was working at the church. We're gonna talk about this soon. And all of a sudden I opened Facebook and there's ads for underwear, everybody, and I look bad. So protect your privacy. And today you get 68% off Nord. If you use my coupon code, the Dad Challenge Podcast, you get an extra free month. If you use my code, nordvpn.com slash the dad challenge. Or when you go to NordVPN, there's a place you can put the code. Just type in the dad challenge so people know that I sent you there. And they're like, yeah, we like this guy because he's sending us people to sign up for Nord. Hold on to your privacy, get NordVPN, connect and be real and be safe and do all those things you need to do there. So that's my spiel. I hope you use it. Let's get right to the episode. Hey, I know I'm popping back in for this. I just had to let you guys know a couple of things. Um, so this is the most heavily edited video I've ever made. Generally, I will talk for an hour and I'll cut it down, cut out some crap, um, just like make it tight. But this one, I actually had to go back a couple of times to fix. And you're gonna see that door open behind me. I left that on purpose so you can see the edits that I've made so that you can understand things I probably said that the lawyer said I shouldn't say, basically. So if you wonder where the GoFundMe money went, I went and got three opinions from lawyers. I, the last lawyer I got opinion from, he listened to the episode twice and that's about an hour and 20 something minutes twice. And then we had a long conversation about an hour and a list of notes of things. I'm just to just protect myself. I shouldn't say definitive statements, even though I might believe them <laughs> myself. He just said, look, in order to, to, you know, mitigate the risk of being sued and liable and slander and all these things. There's some things you gotta, you know, be softer on or not say so definitively. So the money that went to the GoFundMe was really, 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 really helpful because I've, these things are really important because I can be very passionate about what I'm talking about, especially if I know it's a truth and I, I'm putting it out there. So I really appreciate that, that I got the opportunity to speak to a lawyer and that actually is gonna carry over for me as a YouTuber and me doing these types of stories. What I'm allowed to say, how I'm supposed to say things and actually realizing that some other YouTubers are saying things that can get them in a lot of trouble, but the law is different here in Canada, so I get it. So anyway, I really wanna say thank you for your support in that. Any leftover money that I have, I'm uh, I'm gonna leave it up to you guys from the GoFundMe crew who I can donate it to another pastor who might be fighting something. I can donate it to a cause that you guys are willing to have. You guys can take a vote or a poll on it. Um, I, I don't wanna put it in my pocket. That's not what this was all about. I wish I could refund it. I don't know. There's a little bit left over, about $400. So if you guys want it to go somewhere awesome, let's do that or we can go buy somebody some groceries and I can make, you know, do something nice with it. I don't know. You guys let me know what you wanna do and we could do something really cool. Cool. I know I've got a YouTuber uh, fan out there who's struggling right now. Um, she's thinks she's willing to tell her story and I'm willing to help her out with that if you guys want me to do that. That would be awesome and I can say it came from you, not me, right? And so that's something we can do. Anyway, or I can hold on to it because I know I'm probably gonna get a cease and desist letter. All that to say that everything in this video is my opinion. This is not proven, definitive, or any statements that I make where I say, yeah, this is it, this is still my opinion. It's not proven 
otherwise. And so this is all my conjecture, my opinion. So I please do not reach out to this church for to hate them, to leave bad comments, to do anything to call them. If you have genuine questions, I can't stop you from asking genuine questions, but I I know how this YouTube thing can be. And this the point of this video series was never to throw shade, to, to, to send angry people after them or anything. The point of this video is to actually show the congregation um, what they, what is going on inside of that church. So anybody outside these walls that's not really into that, this, it's not, you know, it's going to sound pretty harsh, but it's not your place to kind of come in. And I, but I appreciate you wanting to stand because I know some people have already left comments on their Facebook page and stuff. I, you know, I appreciate your willingness to stand up for me. Um, I don't need it. And I, I, I love you, but I really want to make sure that you are not going to these people um, and leaving terrible comments and anything because this is not my intention whatsoever. My intention was to uncover the truth and um, to have them be held accountable to the, their truth that you're going to hear in this recording with their voices. And it's not to be said as truth quote unquote, this is just me and sharing my opinion on the events. If they want to come out and say their opinion on events, I'm happy to hear it. I'm happy to have uh, them reach out and leave a comment, whatever it is. I'm just saying this is all my conjecture, all my opinion, and please don't leave any hate anywhere else. I appreciate everything you've done up to this point. Again, you're going to hear me say this in the video today. If nothing comes from this, I got to be done with that. I got to, got to get it off my heart. I got to figure out how to forgive and I have to figure out how to walk away. Um, just from this situation doesn't mean I'm not going to like call back on the story when it, when I'm talking about the church in my ministry Monday series on different parts of the church, because this is what I know. Right. And this is where I've gained all this information. So all that to say, sorry for interrupting you again. Let's get right to the recording. Hey everybody. Welcome to the dad challenge podcast. My name's Josh and you are here for episode six of why I'm an ex pastor. And it has culminated to this moment that since you started watching this story and have been outraged by it like I was and have heard the stories and from the own words of their secret public meeting. So up to this moment, I've told you everything I can tell you. I've told you my side. They've told you their side in their secret public meeting. And I had some, you know, some cliffhangers at the end of those videos that I don't apologize for. <laughs> One of those cliffhangers led to me telling you guys that I recorded the conversation with the pastors. And the reason I did it was because I actually felt in my gut that something was about to go down and I knew my rights. First of all, in Canada, one party consent to recording is completely legal and it happens all the time. As long as you're party to the conversation, you can't just privately record anybody if you're not party to the conversation. And so obviously I was party to this conversation. Two, I just felt down in my gut that something was about to go down because I'd, if you're on parental leave or any kind of leave in Canada that's protected, when you ask to come back, they legally have to give you your job back. And when I reached out to the lead pastor about coming back early, he said no. Even though initially when I took the time, they said, call us whenever you want to come back early, we'll have you back. There was a conversation where they said that to me and then this changed. So I felt in my gut that something was off. You guys know that. And my wife was like, no, you're, you're, you're crazy. There's no way they're going to do that. Like even she who roots for the underdog, who, who always sees both sides and always tells me that I'm not always, but I can be wrong. And she doesn't, she's not afraid to call me out. She was like, no, you're wrong about this. Like, There's no way they're going to, this is a church. They're not going to fire you for taking leave. You didn't do anything wrong. And yet here we are. So leading up to this point, it's been kind of a fearful journey because partly there, when I released the recording to the pastors at the elders request, because the elders said, look, if you want to do this, it's the biblical ways to, to reach out to the pastors, tell them what you have, explain to them, talk to them about it, because that's biblical. And so I said, okay, that's fair. And I did that. And then you all know that in their response was to just hire a lawyer and sick a lawyer on me using the church's money that people tithe to the church. So this is a bigger narrative here for all that is that the churches can use people's money to scare the shit out of pastors and sue them even frivolously if they please. So that's, that's kind of what's going on here. And then I said, so I released the recording to them with my little podcast. I was going to put out to say, look, if you don't come out and tell everybody what you did, um, this is coming out. And the thing I'm asking them to do is to tell people why they fired me with not the lies. Cause if it's map goals, I missed, or it's the fact that I'm no longer happy there. You can't fire somebody for that. It's just not a thing. And to answer the questions, why was I not afforded the rights of most other people where if I'm doing something wrong, you call me out on it, you bring me into a meeting and you say, we got to correct this behavior or we cannot continue. Why was I, again, just a, just simple questions. That's all I ask. And then why did they lie on to, to the, to their public private meeting about the statement that we put it, that we apparently all agreed upon when I told, when I proved to you 
right there in the writing where they did not come out with the agreed upon statement. So there's just too much here. And so this recording serves as undeniable proof as far as I'm concerned about two major lies. I hope this recording shows you that in my opinion, that there's a case to be made that these two are willing to lie about two things. One, uh, they wanted to make sure that this would come across as a mutual thing. Despite my insistencies in this meeting, in this call that you'll hear me, or in this recording that you'll hear me say, I did not wish for that to be a thing. I wanted them to be honest with the congregation and tell them why they fired me, because I wanted to know, right? And two, that based on the talk about EI, that there could be a possible case to be made for fraud, which is really hard to prove. Um, I'm not saying that they did that. I'm just saying I'll let you hear it and you be the judge of that. And so those are the two major things that pop out as far as deception and lies are concerned, in my opinion. And so I want you to keep that in your mind when we, when we get to this point where they talk about this EI thing, where it sounds like they're being really nice. And so there's are two major issues here. And once this recording comes out, which it will here in a few minutes, and nothing else happens from here, I, I'm kind of done with it. Because if you can hear with your own words what I went through and, and justify still going there or not, at least at minimum, not calling these guys out um, and asking the hard questions and setting up the meetings and going in there and talking to the elders and everything else. If you can justify saying, no, that they were cool. And you, after you hearing this with your own ears, with, in, with their voice, their inflection, their tones with me in the room, and if you can justify that, then you live in a fantasy world. And I'm going to stop it once in a while and talk to you a little bit about what's going on because a lot of you don't know the ins and outs of some things that they're speaking of. But that's what's happening here. And so thank you for supporting me and my GoFundMe for this uh, hiring this lawyer because uh, basically I'm recording this, sending it off to this lawyer who I've been speaking to. He's going to watch it. He's going to pick it apart and tell me what I can't put in it. So some things you probably won't see in here. But um, I, I wanted to tell you that this is kind of where that money has gone. It's quite expensive to hire a lawyer to watch it, you know, probably an hour video or longer or two hour video and they probably have to watch it multiple times. So I'm just, I'm making double, triple, quadruple sure that I'm okay to do what I'm doing right here. I will not be mentioning anything about severance because I am not allowed to. And so that's just one major thing there. So if you hear some blanks or some cuts, that's because we're probably talking about severance. And so I will not be talking about severance. And so I wanna say thank you for joining me in this journey. This is kind of where it comes to a head. If they say something and they come out with a statement, then I will obviously continue to cover this. And I'm hoping they do. I'm hoping that they're forced to come out with a statement. They're forced to say, okay, you've heard our words now. Let us clarify what we meant or whatever they want to say to shift the optics in this. But as soon as you hear this with your own ears, like I, I would love your honest opinion while you're listening down in the comments below. Am I, am I way out of line here? Because maybe, you know what? Over all this, maybe my anger and being upset has clouded my judgment to actually this conversation because I have had conversations with people who have heard this. And it's mixed. They're like, it's not so bad. Although my wife, who never says holy shit, said holy shit when she heard this. So it, it, I believe that that's my benchmark for holy shit. I want you to be honest, because maybe is my hurt clouding this? Is, am I just looking for something to be offended about? But I want you to be honest with me, and I'm, I'm willing to hear it all. And so let's get right to it. The infamous recording. And here's how it went down. You know, the night before I was, I could not sleep because I was like, I think I'm getting fired. And my wife's like, you're crazy. And then she went to sleep and stored. And then I woke up nervous after sleeping for maybe 30 minutes, um, sick. And I'm like, I'm, this is going down. I know it's going down. I drive into the parking lot. I get out of my van, take a deep breath. I walk into the church. I walk up to the f second floor and I didn't actually think I was going to record until that moment right there. I walked by one of the admins at the desk. And for whatever reason, she gave me a smile. She was, I like this admin. She's really nice. And I, I just said, ah, oh, man, I'm doing this. And I just took my phone out and I pressed record. And I walked into that office and they were, you could tell the vibe right off the top was cold. And here it goes. <laughs> That's me walking down the hallway. I'm keeping this all in so you can hear like the, the energy. Did uh, Carol just sell the bounty uh, castle? Uh, no, trying to get the certification. Oh, okay. So it's just 
trying to become a licensed. Yeah. 400 hours or something, right? Uh, 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 Oh, so she doesn't have to take the 200 So what the conversation is happening now is so weird. And I just realized that we had this conversation because, you know, you have to break the ice a little bit before you fire somebody legally. But I walked in and I asked him why his wife was standing by the bouncy castle. Because there's a law in Ontario that you have to have 240 hours of sitting in front of a bouncy castle in order to operate a bouncy castle because they need the bouncy castle. And so they're, that's their way of getting around it is... It's kind of shady too, if you think about it. She's standing in front of an empty bouncy castle in order to fulf to fulfill, <laughs> to be in compliance with a law about standing in front of a bouncy castle. There's actually no kids on the bouncy castle. She was just sitting in front of it. So <laughs> it's funny at the same time. It's like, it's just more indicative indicative of, of churches in general all the time. It's just like, well, we gotta do what we gotta do. You have to be, have the appearance of doing something properly. Oh my goodness. So we'll see. We'll see, because now it, they're feeling like maybe it, it won't pass because the blowers and it's not commercial grade oh okay approved. it's so funny it's a commercial grade like i'm laughing because this like this is a conversation that that pre that predates me about to just getting lit up by these guys it's so funny that this is how the conversation opened but it's more indicative too of this of this executive pastor who that, that's all i could speak to this guy on because like a corporate shill who just, he can't, he's never personal. He's just not a person that you'd ever tell him anything personal. It's just, hey, how's the bouncy castle going? That's basically this guy. That's this guy in a nutshell. Wow. That's crazy. So we've been walking through filing paperwork and trying to get that because it's just cheaper. Right? Okay. But we can't, we can't have to be able to use it. Oh, no, it's so, sitting there. Yeah, so then if, if not, then we'll just sell it. That's it. Those the professionals. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy as the professionals is they come and set it up and leave. Yeah. Like, it's just... Yeah, yeah. How yeah. Do they, yeah. <laughs> 240 hours seems like, how do they have 240 hours? Oh Most of the part time. <laughs> you just have to sit there. Well, I'm probably in my mind right now, please get this other guy. I think he was in the bathroom or something. I'm like, please, please let me stop talking about this bouncy castle. <laughs> well, it's a little crazy. It's up in the day. Right? And then one of our volunteers, man, is that even yeah. in the it's just a nutty, a nutty world. Some, some kid hurt themselves on Bounce Castle, probably. Yeah, yeah there's some lawsuits and stuff, and then they brought them all under. Yep. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, you find yourself. So, so we're trying it. Um, I'm not sure it's going to pass, and if it doesn't, get rid of it. What is that? Bounce Castle. <laughs> That's the lead bastard comes in and is like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> Carolyn's trying to come to oh, in place of a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally me. So how you doing? Decent, yeah. All right. Yeah, decent. I didn't say okay. I, <laughs> I was not doing decent. I was like, you know, you can, you know, when you walk into these types of meetings and you're like, what is it? But I knew. I could just, man. At this moment, I realized I should try. I need to trust my gut more because I was like. I was like butterflies in the stomach. I was like very nervous. Like going to the principal's office, you don't know why. Yeah, I think I got it. I was doing the Jones, Jones website today, so I was in there getting photos of the team. So she gave me a little work, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on the website I'm doing for the gym, local gym, it's called Verve that Banga goes to. He trains there. Oh, okay. So this lady owns a gym and she's like, I want to revamp my website. And I, I was like, oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'll do whatever I can. So yeah, yeah just working. Just trying to get. I'm some telling them stuff. this because I'm like, hey, I need to get back to work. <laughs> like these people, are, these people are throwing me work because I'm poor. Please, I need to come back to work. Is why I'm telling them this. Trying to get some extra stuff going. Cool. Thanks for coming in. No problem. We want to talk to you about you and Creekside and the fit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to start off by saying that there are lots of areas that I'm. I'm very excited about you in terms of your skill set and your and what you bring to Creekside. Okay, mm -hmm. so your your ability to work with a band is great. Your energy on stage, your humor, mm -hmm. your personality, all that stuff. We really we're really really fired up about. Um, at the same time, there's there's a, there's this fit thing that has been on our hearts for a long time, mm -hmm. and we've been wondering about it and wrestling through it, mm -hmm. and and um, particularly around your performance evaluation and what came up about as a result of that. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about the most recent performance evaluation, the one that I was late for, for I missed the first one and then I missed the second one and then I came for the third one. 
and uh, this fit thing. He said it's been on our hearts for a long time. So you think about it, that's been on the hearts for a long time. I've helped that place grow by hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people over my time there. So the fit thing isn't that I'm not good at what I do. The fit thing is that he doesn't like me. That's what he's saying here. The fit thing is that I'm asking hard questions, is that I'm not compliant. So when they say they fired me, this is what he means. And I think that me taking the parental leave was the straw that broke the camel's back as I took the parental leave and I'm like, we gotta, we gotta cut this. We gotta finish this guy off. And so that's what he's saying there. So when they come out to the world and say that it's like we fired him because of a fit thing, that just seems crazy to me because I was very good at my job, very good at my job. And the multiple job offers I've had over the time when I was being headhunted there and after this position, thank God I didn't go back into ministry, but means that I was good at my job, that I was being sought after. And I'm not trying to float my boat. I just know that my strengths and abilities, I know what I'm good at. I'm not, that's not being cocky. That's just, that's what I'm gifted in. And that's why I was hired by this place to begin with. Mm -hmm. we've had, we've, we're just not, we don't think it's a good fit, Josh. And that's been a struggle that we've had. Mm -hmm. um, and so we want to talk to you about that today. Mm -hmm. um, we, let me just kind of share some of those perspectives that we have just so you can understand where we're coming from. Sure, please do. Um, you are unhappy with, and you've expressed this multiple times, the job description, right? So I'm unhappy with the job description and have never said the words ever to this pastor or anybody in that building that I'm unhappy with my job description ever. I just said, look, I need some help or I need you to shift the job description so that I can do my job properly. And don't forget when I started this job, the tech director quit and I took on his job. So they shifted my job description multiple times. We'll get to that a little later. Right. Mm -hmm. And you've said things like, you know, you're asking me to do stuff that I'm not good at and, and so on and so forth. You also talked about your pay, that you're not real happy about your pay. Nope. Didn't say that either. Did not say I was unhappy about my pay. I asked for a raise because my wife was going to enter full-time school and she didn't actually get in. So thank God. But I said, look, my wife is trying, is trying to go to school. It's going to cost this much a year. And I'm wondering if I can get a temporary raise because of all the overtime that I do and all the work that I do here, I would love a temporary raise so that I could help my wife get through school so I don't have to be, so that we literally don't go broke forever. So I did not say I was unhappy with my pay. I just, I, sh I shot my shot and I was denied. And I did not say anything. I wasn't upset about it. I told my wife I would ask and I did and I didn't get it. And that was that. That's just how this works. I'm an adult here, okay? People, I'm not going to be upset about that. But I did believe I was worth it. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. You talked about you're not real happy about your workload. You know, you talked about yeah, because I was burning out. I said to them, I'm burning out. Please get me some help. So if what he's saying right here is you're not happy with your workload. Yeah, because I'm working. Remember the 122 hours over, what is it, nine days over that one Christmas? That's a lot of work. I work really hard. My workload is crazy. So yeah, please help me alleviate it or I'm going to burn out and I'm going to quit or I'm going to leave or you're going to fire me. Like it... Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, if you are overworked and you come to your leadership, especially at a Christian church and say, man, I'm overworked. Can you help me with this? And they don't. And then they say, well, he's just complaining about it. When these guys go home at 3 PM every day. Sorry. We talked about, you know, around Christmas, I ended up for whatever number of hours and so mm -hmm. on. And you're not happy with your work, with work, the workload and the work hours as well. Mm -hmm. So when we start looking at those four areas. He's making it sound like I work like six hours a day and I go home. No, I'm not happy with spending four nights a week away from my family. I'm not happy with waking up at 5.30 in the morning on a Sunday and going to two different churches and campuses. I'm not happy with doing all the extra work and then coming in for these stupid leadership summits and working two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten extra days a year for no pay whatsoever and I'm forced to do it as volunteer, right? I'm not happy the fact that they forced me to do that stuff when I'm already working like a dog. That's what I'm not happy about. And I never even said I'm not happy. I just said, look, I need some help. It's all I said to them and they're like, oh, he's unhappy. Four areas. We, that's pretty well the whole job. And mm -hmm. you know, for you to be working in a job where you're not really feeling happy about it is, is obviously not something you want to do. It's do you hear the gaslighting here that's happening right now? You are unhappy and working in a job that you're unhappy with. You, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do this. They're like, do they think I'm dumb? I, I think they do because I think people in the past have just gone for the, Oh yeah, you're right. I, I hate it here. And so just pay attention to that. There's a lot of gaslighting going on in this meeting. And gaslighting is a thing that is very, very, very like psychologically damaging to people. And this is considered, in my humble opinion, 
spiritual abuse. It's certainly not something we want for somebody who's on staff either, you know, for mm-hmm. them to be in a situation where they're not feeling happy. That's, do you understand? Where- they don't want anybody on staff who's not happy. Like, I kind of get it. So why don't you make the job and help the person that when they ask for help so that they can bring some joy back into their life and spend some time with their family and do some things in ministry that they love instead of just forcing them to do everything. When I took this job, the one thing that they always ask, which is a dumb question, by the way, what's your, what's your biggest, le- your, your weakest link in whatever you do? My weakest link, administration. I suck at administration. They knew this. I did all the interagrams and all the tests and all the things I did. They knew my weaknesses. And they knew that when they hired me. And it's not like, so they said, cool, we'll, we'll, you know, we want you for your strengths, not your weaknesses. And so the fact that I came in and didn't become an administrative professional is another reason they're firing me when they knew right off the top that I was not an administrative professional. So that's what he's talking about here. Sam, we're uncomfortable. Do you know what is your, what is your, how do you? Well, I mean, it's, it's less about being happy and it's more about the, the ask for help. So it's not, it's not, it's not, I understand that. That ministry takes time like I know that that 122 hours over eight days is a lot I know that only happens like two three times a year not that I was saying I hate it I'm just saying it's hard exactly and I, I 122 hours over eight days guys come on please that's at Christmas too so I don't even see my family at Christmas so ministry is yes I, I get it it's the job I took I understand that you have to do that stuff but when I came to them it was about for help so I don't have to do that so I can literally spend me maybe, maybe do 80 hours at Christmas not 122, right? It's not a, it's not a big ask. I don't, I don't think that asking for help because I'm burning out is a bad thing. They do. That's, that is the overarching narrative here. So uh, it wasn't that I was unhappy. It was just like, it's, it's rough after two or three years of doing that. That it's like, but not getting the help. A lot of it stems from the asking for help and then getting, and then being told that I don't get her to help me to do those things I wanted her to help me with. That was a, See, this is the thing I'm trying to tell them. I'm like, you guys said I was going to get help, and then you ambushed me right afterwards, and then gaslit me. And I hear the gaslighting coming. Get ready for it. That was a big point of contention for me. That was a big one where I was like, that was really hard to hear. So, um, yeah, that uh, I'm not scared of work. I have I have no qualms with being with working hard. I I, I think I do that. I think uh, Mm -hmm. they agreed. Really, the guys here last and first, and we do a lot of. Uh, a lot of those things, that's just the job. It's, I'm not unhappy with that. I just, I would have liked some help. I'm making it very clear here that I'm not unhappy, that they are projecting it onto me. And I wanted to make sure that they knew that because I knew what they were doing here. I knew what they're trying to achieve because I, because I caught on pretty quick. So, you know, just so I could do other things. It wasn't about the work. It was just about, Hey, I want to do other things. So yeah, it could have been, I, I certainly don't, I, yeah, I don't think that you're lazy by any stretch of the imagination. And I think you put yourself into it and you mm-hmm. know, I mean, some things you've done like hey, all those, you know, all those little white paper circle things, yeah. you know, all that sort of thing that were, yeah. that were, you know, that's... That made Christmas amazing. What he's talking about is I, I gathered 100 volunteers to do paper chains and we lit up the stage, this incredible Christmas thing. And he's like, just, he's just like, oh, you did this and that's cool, you know, but you know what? That stuff takes, that's where the 122 hours comes in. Those are the things that I went above and beyond because I was sold out for this place. Because I was ride or die. I was in and I was going to do whatever it took to get butts in those seats because I was indoctrinated to believe that that was whatever I needed to do to get people in there. And so I did insane things. And and they they took all the credit for it. And then in the end, oh, you're unhappy. You know, you take all the credit for it. I do all the work. So, uh, you know, ministry, again, I'm not doing this to take credit. But at the same time, when they're just dismissing huge benchmark events that happen at this place, like it's just, oh, you did that. You know, it's... Somebody did something. Somebody, some people did something. Basically, they're doing, you know, that. It's not that. It's more. Was I, I've never had anybody on staff who said what you've said. Who, who basically, I can use the word, complained about mm-hmm. all those things. Never. And <sighs> so I've never had someone complain to me. Really? So is that saying more about me, or more about you? And that people are afraid to approach you with complaints because you're a diehard, you must be in control at all times. I'm going to go with the latter, that it's because nobody wants to reach out to you with complaints because they're probably going to get fired. <laughs> like, whoops. And, and so it's like, you know, we're, we struggle a little bit with that, mm-hmm. okay? And, and 
And then when you hit the performance evaluation, you know, you missed one, mm -hmm. never had anybody miss a performance evaluation. Then you missed the second one. Mm -hmm. Then you came to the third one, but you had the wrong maps. The fact that he says this bothers me so much. First of all, the first one I was on vacation and it was in the calendar and he knew that. Yes, I missed it. The second one I missed it by accident, my fault. But let's not forget, I was on parental leave. There's nothing forcing me to come in. I came in out of respect for my elders, out of respect for my pastor. And then he said, then you came in with the wrong map. He sent me like three of them, okay? And then I just opened the wrong one by accident. I had my computer open and then, then you know what I did to get the right one? I went click, click, and I opened the right one. He just, it's crazy how much he's digging for things here. It's like the tiniest things become like, I did, I, I murdered people because I didn't bring the right map on my computer. I, I opened the wrong map in the Word document and then opened the right one in two seconds later. Don't forget this stuff, guys. This is where the gaslighting is happening. So we, I said, you gotta get the right map. You came in with the map and um, you didn't score very well. And so that's another thing that makes us say, is this a good fit? Mm -hmm. And then when we finished that, you, I, you know, you basically went through. I didn't score very well because I took parental leave. Think about this for a second, people. I didn't score very well because this is the, this was after I took my parental leave and I had missed the meeting because of my vacation. Then I'd missed the one next one because of my own fault. So already I was going in like way under, like I was already, I was already being scored wrong because of this. I took parental leave and they were pissed about that. I missed the meeting. He's pissed about that. So you think he's going to score me well? Again, they needed to protect their butts, so he needed to give me a bad performance review so they could say he had a bad performance review. I mean, you like this it's not a conspiracy, people. He's the one who set the con he's the one who sets he's the one who grades me. And let's not forget the two performance reviews the two years before were like glowing reviews. Tens, nines, like everything with like, we love you here. We're so excited about you. Boom, 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 boom. Let's not forget that. All of a sudden, at the end, after I take leave, I'm the worst person that's ever worked there. Your list of things that you weren't happy about. Mm -hmm. to what you know, you talked about and what's he do and can gets three, you know, X five weeks holidays, I only get three. I'm I'm always saying no to you. I got pissed because there's a pastor that comes on as a and here's the here's the thing. Campus pastors for churches that are satellite churches who have like these mini campuses all over the place, campus pastors have it good. Okay. This guy gets paid more than me, gets more vacation than me, comes in a, almost two years after I started and gets like cause and does nothing like I'm not I'm not gonna lie about this and this is this is the talk it's like look pay people what they're worth pay people the fair value of what they've done the, the hours they put in I'm not saying this guy doesn't do anything but I'm what I'm saying is that when I went over there at noon sometimes he's gone when he, he never speaks on a Sunday he, he on his job was to answer emails and on Sunday morning get up and introduce the lead pastor on the on the overhead projector. That's what his job was to do. And he's the guy that also threw me under the bus when it came to hiring the new worship leader at that campus. She was supposed to help me. And he's like, no, nah, she's not helping him. She's helping me. So he also did that. So of course I'm going to be upset. Like if you're going to, if you're going to do that. And I, I came to him and said, what's this guy doing? Like I'm upset because you're not being fair. Not that he gets more than me. I'm upset that you, that I do more around here than anybody else. And you guys treat me like this. That's what I was upset for. And so he's, he doesn't like that. Of course, I'd just be honest with him. But I, one day I went over to that church because I'd forgotten something like a cable. I was picking up a cable or my tune or my guitar or something. I pull up to that church. Nobody's there. It's noon. Where's no, there's nobody here. Okay, get in there. The freaking sanctuary, whatever you want to call it, was literally flooded with about an inch and a half of water. Liters of water were pouring out of the ceiling because there was an ice, the, the, it has a flat roof and it was all ice and it was melting coming into the church onto our new projector, and if I hadn't shown up when I showed up, there would probably would have been over $100,000 worth of damage. All of our equipment was there, our electronic equipment, it had not reached the wall yet, it was pooling in the middle of the floor and it was hitting the stage, and there's lots of money and tech there, okay? And if I hadn't shown up, then that's, again, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage. I guarantee you, you know, terrible walls down, water damage, mold, everything else would have happened. I brought the baptismal tank out and I caught all the water. I called everybody. I'm there with the extractor pulling water out. I'm sweeping. I got the, the thing. I'm doing everything. Where was this guy? Where was he? That's what I was upset about. So, yeah, maybe I was being petty. You, I'm, um, always get my way. Um... What he's saying here is that during this meeting, I said, look, whatever you say goes around here. And so when you come across to people and tell everybody that this is a team effort, that's a lie because it's not a team effort because it's a you effort and we just do what you tell us to do. And I said, look, if you, and I didn't say you always get your way. I said, whatever you say goes. So please stop telling everybody that this is a team effort. I probably shouldn't have said that.
and there were just like a list of these things that you went down through and I'm sitting there, I didn't say much, I just listened and thought, mm -hmm. oh boy, this is not, this is not a good spot, you know, for you to be in. Mm -hmm. And then when we came to the... You know, it's, it's, it's very telling here that I, I finally trust him enough to tell him my issues. Here's what's going on. Here's why I'm burned out. Here are the, the major glaring red flags that are happening right now. And his initial reaction is to be like, wow, I need to fire this guy. Not, how can we come meet him halfway? What can we do to be a little bit better here? There's no humility, nothing here. No grace, no understanding. It's just like, yeah, I got to fire this guy. That, do you guys see what I'm seeing there? Or is that just me? Am I overreacting on that one? We came to the, to the um, uh, end of the year report. Um, you... The first copy that you gave us, you remember we were interacting with on that one, and you were, I was, we were at a yeah, yeah, so I was yeah, interacting. Yeah. I, was, I was actually quite upset with that first one, and, and you probably picked it up and yeah. mailed yeah. back to you. All right, story time. So at the end of every year, church has what's called a family celebration meeting, where we get together and we say, here's how amazing we are. And at this was the year that I was really struggling. I was being burnt out. I was just, I was struggling as a leader to like, to empower my volunteers to do what they needed to do. And so my report was positive and it was also, and here's some things I want to work on. So this has been amazing. This, this, we did this and it was incredible Christmas and blah, blah, blah. I, I blew the smoke of rainbows and apple pie, what they were asking for. But then I said, Hey, but here's a few things I'm struggling with. I'm really struggling with a, B, and C, and I'm gonna, and it wasn't, it wasn't a referendum on the leadership. It was a referendum on myself to say, here's what I'm gonna do better to make my life easier. I'm gonna empower volunteers. I'm gonna do this, and he was upset about that because it wasn't all happy. Oh, someone's having a problem here. They don't want people asking questions. They don't want people saying, what's going on with this pastor? Why is he being burned out? I was like, I'm struggling with time. I'm, I, I, I really need to work on this. I have the email somewhere I can, I don't know if I'm allowed to read that. I'm going to ask the lawyer if I can read that to you, but that, that statement, cause this is a big deal to him. This was the thing that, I've never seen him angry at me before ever. And he was angry at me for this end of the year letter. And if you actually get to read it, you're going to be like, what? That's what you're going to say. You're like, why is he upset about that? And, but I, I just like, Josh, what are you doing? Like you're throwing people under the bus. And I, I, it, it, it really, it just accentuated mm -hmm. the fact that this, this isn't, this fit isn't working here. Mm -hmm. um, and I want you to be happy and in a place where you can feel fit. Sure. And I want Creekside, obviously we want Creekside to, mm -hmm. to be in that same kind of context. No. Well, in my opinion, what they're saying here is we don't want you asking questions. We don't want you telling people you're tired. We don't want anybody. We don't want anybody like you here who's going to rock the boat a little bit, ask hard questions. We don't want someone here who's, who's influential and all that stuff. We just don't, we don't like you because we're scared of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. Um, I'm not unhappy. I'm just. Those were. It was a moment of, which is part of the reason I took the leaves because I needed a break and I just was getting because I, I felt the same way. I was like, man, I'm getting to a point where, like, I'm not unhappy, but I'm like, I'm really start. I'm struggling with the the time commitment and like, um, being told that, for you know that, I missed the one of the things I missed on my map was the youth thing and, not being really listened to about that where it was like, look, I. I I asked to help. They said they didn't want my help, but I still I still get the brunt of the of the failure on that one, right? So there's a few things where I feel like I was I, I was I was just trying to be honest, and that's fine. And sometimes I have to tell them here, and this is crazy that I have to protect myself this way, that I'm seeing that they're gaslighting me, that they're like you're unhappy, you're unhappy, right? You're unhappy, right? Yeah, you you're unhappy, right? If you agree with the statement that I think you're unhappy, that means you're unhappy, right? We have to tell people that you're unhappy, so that's why we let you go. I wasn't having it. I was like, I'm not unhappy. I'm tired. I'm a little bit burned out. I'm a little bit pissed that you guys offered me help and then I didn't get it. Yeah, of course. But am I unhappy? Nope. I'm here. I'm here to do this. Honestly, you know, honest is not always the best policy, but I just said sometimes honesty is not always the best policy. Um, the things that I do well, I think I are I'm valuable to, to that. And I was like, well, maybe it's that's what I'm I'm, I'm reevaluating. Re what am I good at? What am I good at? And so trying to figure out what I'm good at. And then, but. The job description is not that it's bad. It's just that you've shifted it a couple of times. Both of you have mm -hmm. shifted it. Like for certain things when I started. It, the day I started, it shifted with the tech director quitting and me getting another full-time role. If you don't consider that shifting my job description, I don't know what that's called. Adding to it and shifting it, whatever. Maybe the word is semantic. I don't know. Um, and that's okay. I, I, I submit to my leadership. You guys tell me what to do. I will do it. But when I asked you to shift it, a different way where it helps me get better or do other things better or shift like again away from administration or doing all the stuff that I'm terrible at or whatever. 
Um, it's just like, no, that's the job description. And so, okay, I get it, but... And I'm calling him out here. I'm like, you know, when I ask you to help me, oh, no, we can't shift the job, job description. We can't do that. <laughs> it helps you. No, we're not helping you. Oh, but we need you to take on another full-time role as a tech director. Yeah, you have to do that. No, you have to do that. Or you have to do this. Or, you know, yeah. It's just they're hypocritical here. That's what I'm telling them in a nice way. You have shift, You have changed the job description since I started. Like, tech used to be under me. Then it got shifted to communications. When I first started here, I was doing tech. And then, with, and then we had, what's his name, come on, um, and then I was still doing tech because he was terrible at it. So it's, I've been wearing a lot of hats. And so, yeah, a lot of it compounded up to that point where I was like, okay, I need, a, I need a help. I need help. So, so, so let me, so I, I just want to clarify a couple of things. Mm -hmm. So what would be the picture of the shifting? So is that predominantly the shifting that you felt was for the removal of the deck from underneath you? Yeah, that and a lot of then uh, adding of like, of red tape to, to decision making and um, things like that, which don't go through. And, you know, it was a lot of butting heads creatively with a bunch of people, which is fine. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I love, I'm a team player. Like, best idea should win. I get it. I know how that works. But a lot of stuff I just left unsaid, and I just dealt with it how I used to, and I shouldn't have. Like, I shouldn't have just, like, let it get to a point where I was a tipping point, right? It wasn't a – there's not a lot of people I can reach out to to talk to about this stuff, too, because I had never experienced that before, right? So, so I just want to unpack that a little bit. So yeah. the shift – New drinking game. Every time this guy says unpack, you take a drink. You know – uh, the shift around the tech, right, would be in response to um, what we would have felt. Yes, you were doing it because it was... Just get ready for the gaslighting. It was under your job mm -hmm. when you first started, yeah. and we didn't have a tech director. Yeah. And then we hired someone under you. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't under me. They put them under the communications. There is the tension that you... you and that, you know, we walk with as best as we yeah. could yeah. And, and you know there is the tension is that you you have a disposition to tech and you know it mm -hmm. um so <laughs> what's trying to say here well you know it so you do it okay sure dude i also have to do other jobs well you can't justify saying well you know it so you're doing it that's what these guys that's where these that's what they think though well you're strengthening you so you go do that and then they just they don't see the the absolute craziness that your life is because they leave at three o'clock every day they don't see the struggle and then when i complain about my struggle i get fired so can you guys see them my rock and hard place here but we would question not and not because of because of um uh some of your giftings that you you are a doer of the tech mm -hmm. but uh you know we would wrestle with you to engage to engage probably some discussion that we didn't really have in some ways around um he just i don't even know what he said here we would wrestle with you to engage in a conversation we didn't really have what is he saying here he this is the corporate speak i'm talking about when it comes to churches like this they have to be very careful what they say he doesn't even make sense being the leader over someone that's underneath you that 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 added more strain mm -hmm. and um uh issues that it felt better for oh you. That, yeah don't get me wrong move that under yeah, no, I, I'm so, not complaining that it happened. I'm just saying that it 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 did shift, but not. You're you're okay with changing that? That's great. I I'm not mad at that. Yeah, but no, but I but I hear you. But I want you to understand that that shift was made. Yeah. Get ready for it. Actually, in regards to you and to better help you fit here. Mm -hmm. Not help me do things to better better help me fit. Hear this. I just caught this now. We didn't like who you were, so we were taking out positions of power that you that you were over top of. That's what he's saying here. Not to help me, to help you better fit here. To fit into that slot we want you to fit in. So we took away your ability to make decisions. I just picked that up now. Wow. The other things that you're referencing about the job description that you, you know, made in the list of issues, you know, with Ken and your 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 performance and, and throughout, you know, some of the things that you wrestled with. Our key area is that the worship pastor that we have to have on staff here mm -hmm. has to be administrative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I t and they knew that was my weakness. So you know that if you know that that's someone's major weakness, why do you expect them to be amazing at it? I don't get it. I'm amazing at the other things. Let me be amazing at the stuff I'm amazing at. And when they're talking about administration, it's not like I missed anything. It's not like I dropped the ball. I just was like one word emails or I missed like... 
or I, I, I'm just a terrible planner and my time, I always left things to last minute because I actually do my best work when I'm under the gun, which sucks for a lot of people, but it's literally where my, web, my best work comes from when I'm under pressure. It's just how I work. Unfortunately, not everybody works that way. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no ability to totally, to shift those other than, you know, we added, you know, we gave her more hours. Mm -hmm. We have to talk about this. He added this girl. I, this little, here's the thing. The lead pastor has his own executive who does everything for him, like administrative, does everything for him, right? Four of us in the communication department. So the, the department that does the most hours at this church, which is communications, tech, and uh, sound, and music, right? We're there. We're the ones that are there forever. We're there every day, you know, the first to come, the last to leave. We share an administrator who has to do the work for four people. And, and here's the issue. She was amazing. It's just, I couldn't use her because my administration is musical. You need to know how to write chord charts. You need to know how to put lyric charts in like, you know, it might, and it also very technical. And this administrator, although very, really awesome person was not technically inclined. And then I would have to teach her to be technically inclined, which then adds to my job even more. So yeah, she did a few things for me and she was great. And, but I just could not utilize her to the, to help me actually alleviate my major issues anyway. And so that's, that's what he's talking about. Oh, you had an administrator. No, I technically, yeah, I technically had one that I said hi to once in a while and got her to do maybe half an hour of work a week for me if I could, because I was trying to help her, you know, because I was, because I had to give some work to her, but she couldn't do the things I needed her to do. And that was what this person, this next worship leader was being hired for, was to lead worship at the other campus, take it off my back and to do those musical administrative things that my administrator could not do. Uh, did a bunch of things at your disposal to do that, but you, this role has to, for us, mm -hmm. you know, the one thing we could for do us. is go, you know, some of the things that you would prefer is, you know, well, you want to move to new, more movies or be involved in more tech mm -hmm. or you both, like, we, we just, we just can't, we, we couldn't do that without saying, okay, well, then we would need to hire someone else to be over creative ministry. Not over. You could have hired the person that you said you were going to hire during the meeting we said we were having to help me. You just had to get that worship leader that we hired for the other campus to do those things. He's gas, straight gaslighting right here. Oh, well, if you want to do all those things, we would have had to replace you. <sighs> these creative these ministries. Like there is, there, there's no ability to get outside of, you know, yeah. being a leader. I'm not trying to eliminate admin altogether, but one of the weaknesses that Ken brought up was that it's, uh, was it planning? I think it was, right? It was the biggest, the biggest weakness I have was planning and uh, missing deadlines, which is, was the, the map deadline. And I, I'm trying, I racked my brain over the past, past few months trying to figure out what major deadlines I've really missed. The map one, yes, I could understand how that would be really frustrating. Um, and then you said the one with the vocal, the vocal conference where it was something happened and it was, it was put on. Yes, that was unfortunate. But what he's talking about here is I, I, I asked him during that meeting, he's like, you, you, you missed a bunch of deadlines. I'm like, well, can you explain to me which ones I missed? Because nope. No, I didn't. I don't miss deadlines. Sorry. All of my deadlines were hit. I don't miss deadlines. Maybe a m meeting here and there, an email here and there, sure. I don't miss deadlines. And I asked him, he said, well, the vocal conference. So we had this big, giant vocal conference. We brought everybody out from all these other churches from all around. And he says, I missed my deadline. There's no deadline. We, hired, we had a, a volunteer on the team who was a worship leader who came on to help, and then my administrator finally got some work that she could do, right? And they took that on. And I was just, the, they would ask me questions, what do you want me to do? And I would do graphics where I'd do my part and they had their parts to play. That was the girl that when she came to me and said, look, I wanna do a worship night here for my thesis, for her, for graduating, where we're gonna talk about worship and I'll share this great idea about worship and she was gonna ask people questions about worship. And it was a great, very great opportunity for her. And the church told her to go pound sand through me. I had to tell her to go pound sand. So she left the church. And I don't blame her. And then that person that was supposed to help me with the conference is no longer there halfway through this thing. And I can't take it on. So my administrator took it on. That's her job. And so he said, that was your deadline that I missed, which isn't a deadline. It literally, I don't know what he was talking about. But I'm just trying to rack my brain about the major things that I've missed because of my planning. And I, I couldn't even f think of any. Like I've never missed any major deadlines. The services that matter are, have, been, have been executed. The things that like, that I'm in charge of have been executed. I think, I don't know. That's why I was like, well, maybe. <laughs> I, but again, that's part of me saying, when, that, when we had that meeting, it was really hard. It was, it was hard for me to hear because I like, thought I was doing, I thought I was doing decent. So hearing that I wasn't was kind of, it was frustrating on top of the things that were already happening. So sure. yeah.
So that's what I was saying. Sure, sure, sure. But, and uh, okay, uh, they're silent. If you were so adamant that I missed deadlines, why didn't they speak up here? Well, what about this deadline? What about this one? You, you, if you got something, show me. What are they here? I'm, I'm like, tell me the deadlines I missed. Nope, they have nothing. But it was it, it was less about uh, you know take this off my plate and more like I just need some help. And one of the things that really hurt was not hurt. I say hurt, but that's for lack of a better term was that when I when we brought finally on the whole I was so excited with the whole process. We finally brought on, me understanding the whole time that. It was going to have someone finally help with at least pro presenter or chord charts, things that I can't do, even if I asked her to do it, she can't do that stuff because um, she's not a musician, right? So it's just something, there's something you can do and she's great at it. There's just most of the things that a, a musical admin does, can't do, right? So a part-time worship leader like would have been a perfect opportunity for this to happen. And, you know, part of my contention with T is that he just rolled into my office one day and said, yeah, she's not doing any of that stuff. And I was like, what are you talking about? This has been the whole thing where you're talking about for a year and a half about hiring this person through the whole process. And then it just sh it shifted in like one afternoon. It said, no, she's not doing any of that stuff. She's just Kitchener, don't talk to her, only help her if we need you to help her. And, and That was one thing they said too. One of the big things that pissed me off, and I missed that, is they said, you're not her leader. You're not, you don't oversee her. Even though I'm the worship pastor of this church, everybody, I'm the worship pastor. They explicitly told me, when she comes on, you are not over her. If she needs your help for whatever, you come help her. You are at her beck and call. She's under the executive pa or she's under that campus pastor. I'm not over her. And they said that they're like, you don't, you don't, you don't say anything. You don't tell her anything. You're not over her because they might have assumed that I've been like, hey, do this thing for me. Maybe I don't know. But they explicitly told me, you're not her leader. You're not her boss. You're not anything. You are just at her beck and call if she needs your help. I was basically that's what I was relegated to for that. And that I just remembered that now. And actually, that pisses me off a little bit. And I mean, I don't know if you can see that from my perspective, but that was, I was like thrown for a huge loop, right? I was finally getting some help and then it was like, nope, you don't get the help anymore. So that was, that was hard to hear from me. Gaslighting in three, sure. two, one. I mean, I, I can understand that. I mean, I, I, I want to, I can understand that absolutely, that perspective, mm -hmm. but I, I do want to push back a little bit on that, mm -hmm. Josh, that we, um, get ready for it. Um, we would feel differently that we tried in multiple places that we can point to that we ultimately communicated in a number of places, not just Tim walking in and saying that, mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever, a week before she was hired or whenever that particular thing took place, that as we formulated the multi-site model, mm -hmm. we were learning, yes, I'm mm -hmm. happy to take responsibility for that, but we, as we got closer to where that hire really was and, and formulating that, mm -hmm. that that we feel there were multiple conversations, whether you heard those in the same way. Gaslighting. Whether you heard those the same way, that's your fault. You didn't hear them the same way that we told you them. I've got all the emails, everybody. There was never one email, never one conversation ever about, hey, just so you know, that person is not going to be helping you to think that the way that you think they're going to help you. You think I would have known? I, I would have been, what? Of course I would have been upset if I would have found that out. He's gaslighting me right here, everybody. This is spiritual abuse, part two. I can only say I, I'm sorry that that didn't come across that way, but we feel like there were multiple places, uh, multiple meetings around the sculpting of that job description that it was not going to be uh, an assistant, you know, worship person that was going to alleviate your administrative needs. Nope. And I have the job description and I can show it to you. Yeah, I must have missed and, that and, because and, and, and I remember so we built the, the thing, the job description yeah. together, and I wrote those things that we needed. So we did need it together. We put those in there. Yep. You, you, yep. you gave us said, a list. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and I have, I have the email. Yeah. And we came back and said, these things will not, these things will not be in here, and here's the job description. Nope, because I was part of the actual interview process, too. I was right right to the end i was like hey what are you good like I, he is this straight up gaslighting here is the one thing that got me the most upset and next to the lies are about to they're about to try to tell this is the thing that you guys should be upset about with you know not the most but the secondary most he's gaslighting me saying no no whether or not you heard that the same way you know sorry that you didn't hear it the same way and you're the one who's wrong you're the one who didn't understand it nope I was, I was so desperate for help that if they would have told me that I wasn't going to get help, I would have been in their, in their office right away and saying, what's going on here? I would have absolutely been right at their door and saying, Hey, 
what's this email that I just got that you said she's not going to be doing those things that she said she was going that we said she was going to do. I would have been there. I don't have it. I have all the emails. I don't have that email. And he says he has it. I'd love to see it. Here's the job description. Okay. So I, listen, I understand. I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I just, I mean, I think us as leadership say, you know, we feel like we walk through that, and I think that's that points to, you know. You know, one of the challenges around some of that, the fit type mm -hmm. of talk that we're having here. What? That I didn't, that I was, <laughs> that I didn't assume things that you think that you put out there for me. So that's, I don't, I don't fit here anymore because I can't read your mind. Is that what he's saying here? Here's, here's something that kind of just struck me now is that before this meeting went down, they spoke to a lawyer. And the lawyer, they're probably asking their lawyer, what are we going to say about this one thing where he talks about this pastoral thing? where this person came on and didn't get the help. How are we going to say that without proof, right? This is all legal speak. He's, they definitely talked to a lawyer before they had me in this room because they s admitted so. Here, mm -hmm. Josh, is that, that there are some of those, um, we would see key moments in this last year that, that just provided and culminated in the job performance and levels of your frustration. Let's talk about those key moments for a minute. 122 hours over eight days. Asking questions about why you spent over $150,000 over budget on a thing. Freezing our budgets in the ministry. Over being overworked. Hiring a worship leader that was supposed to help me and then not getting it. Some of those key, those key things that you're talking about? Being burned out? Are you talking about that? Oh, taking leave? Are these the things you're talking about? Because I didn't do anything wrong. At all. Nothing I did was wrong. No fireable fences here, guys. Nothing. Just the fit thing is what they're saying. Didn't fit into their slot. Was asking hard questions. Was an influencer. And, and burnout mm -hmm. and all that that, that um, you know, that stirs in our hearts that says, you know, I mean, we've done this enough to see people that go, that, that get to the frustration level that you are. Mm -hmm. He just said, we've done this enough that when we see someone get to the levels you're at, I just caught that now too. I'm catching all this new stuff later. This is the nine people before me that left. We see people getting into levels of frustration where you're at now and we fire them. Mm -hmm. And we feel like we've walked through all of these conversations to where, you know, you know, 99% of the people that get to the place that where you are, it, it is, it ultimately points. I don't know what I was doing, scratching my balls or something. And the role that we have. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a number of the great things that Ken listed are right. That, that are the, we love about you and you've mm -hmm. brought us to the other things, the other weight of the role, particularly around the administration. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you 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 define some of the tensions around being red tape and restrictions or what I would call structure. Mm -hmm. This is the structure, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, <laughs> we can't change how that structure is going to be. You're gonna. Okay, he just said the words. We can't change structure. Again, this is just just gaslighting. You can change structure. You've changed it multiple times. Why can't and why can't you change structure? You're the leadership of this church. I don't understand. We can't. This th that one to me pissed me off. Like, we can't change it. So you just have to deal with it. And, and that's where they're kind of like they're not willing to budge an inch. But I'm the one who has to change everything about me to meet them and fit into their slot. You're gonna, mm -hmm. it, we we need people that are going to be able to fit in that, feel fulfilled, not frustrated. We need people who are going to be able to fit in that. Again, I can't, I can't write this stuff. They saying it for me. Frustrated mm -hmm. and be able to function in that. Mm -hmm. and, and this isn't, and I don't want to really show this isn't, this isn't that we don't love you or think you have giftings or great abilities. When you say the culmination of this year and you're actually, actually the leading to you is burnt out. To burn out and, you know, the anxiety and just the levels of, of, personal soul health ding 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 levels of personal soul health admitting right there we know that you're being burned out and the anxiety that you have and your levels of personal soul health if a pastor ever comes to you and says i think i know your level of personal soul health slap them or kick them in the nuts and walk away what he just said there is one of the most 
grossest things you could ever tell somebody, especially a pastor, a believer. I, we think that your personal soul health is off and you're, you're burned out and you have anxiety. So we're letting you go. What's the first thing you're going to do for somebody who's struggling with, especially anxiety, which I do have generalized anxiety disorder. And they know that that's a mental health disorder. Okay. I have mental health issues because I have generalized anxiety disorder based on my trauma from my childhood. Long story. They know this. They know I'm burnt out because I told them. They know I have anxiety because I told them. My mom had just died six months into my new job and they knew that everything was kind of like, and he's saying, you know, all that stuff is, is really hard, you know? And so what we're going to, in your personal soul health, it's all really hard. So what we're going to do is fire you. Do you guys hear that? Do you guys, do you see a problem with that? Instead of how about we come, how can we come along and help you? Like we say we do as a church, we help everybody. Except when you come, when you have problems, this pastor, we're going to effing let you go. We are going to demolish your life. That's what we're going to do. Do you not see this, the issue here, everybody? Do you not see why I'm upset? For you, I think one of the very contributing factors, this is not a fit. This is not a fit. We get it, I'm not a fit. Um, and that's not, and that's not to say any, in any shape, way, or form, that you don't have giftings or skills or talents or have done some incredible great things here. Mm -hmm. And I think, it, you know, I just think it comes to, to us to, to engage in the conversation, and even more than the conversation, to say, actually, you know, to, together with you say, um, there's probably a different path that we need to take, and the path is not together. Mm -hmm. Together with you say. Here's the first time he's alluding to the fact that we have to say this together. So let, this is where this whole thing is gonna come to a head. This is where the lies and deceit start happening. Mm -hmm but is actually coming to a separate realization mm -hmm. that we need to separate. And he can't even say you're fired. He can't even say we're letting you go. Look how he said that, <laughs> that we're actually going to uh, be, you come to a separation moment and get, uh, you come to a crossroads. Just say it. Cause I think we brought you back. Listen to this. I think, in, you know, leading into Easter and even the, the structure that we have, you know, even added since you have, been mm. gone where he's saying we've even added more work since you've been gone so listen you know the administrative of how we're running the meetings and the mm. necessity of those i think by easter and the demands that they would listen be, that you'd be coming and sitting with ken and going i'm just i'm in trouble i'm wrestling with this i'm wrestling with this mm. because all those all those oh <laughs> we're scared that when you come back you're going to be struggling again and we're not going to help you change it. We're not going to change any of that. Any of the things you told us you're struggling about, we're not changing it. We're actually going to add more work to that. So we, we just feel like, you know, you should be, you know, we're not going to do anything you need help with. We're actually going to make it worse for you. So you probably shouldn't be here. Those other elements that you list in, in the, in the type of things that, are, that were your frustration at the performance review mm. aren't going to go away. And, and I think that at least he's honest. That's the sensitive thing that we, yeah. you know, in many ways would have walked you know, if you, you hadn't gone on turn of the lead, you know, September, October, November, you know, in your coaching meetings with Ken, you would have been walking through. Hear what he just said here, everybody. They asked me to come in monthly to meet with the lead pastor while I was on parental leave as a coaching to get coached. And then don't forget the, the, the lead pastor said, when you get back, we want you to go to Bible college. Don't forget all this. He just told me that if I hadn't if I had have come in for my monthly meetings with the lead pastor, we might not have been here. If I hadn't have come in on my protected time off, my leave away from this place, I should have just came in. I should have just came in. That's not an option when you're on parental leave. Okay. He's basically saying you should have come in. You didn't. So we're letting you go. Uh, this in multiple meetings and unfortunately we didn't have that. So now we're having like a culmination meeting yeah. uh, of just, you know, t and particularly um, we, you know, you prompted this request for a meeting. We were actually already engaged in conversations to actually call you in, mm -hmm. um, to have some discussions about this and try to figure out the way forward. And, mm -hmm. and um, like the, this guy's so frustrating list too. I apologize for this, but you have to, you have to suffer through it. Like I did. If you're, in, if you're in this with me, you have to listen to this. Do you hear like, like, does that have some resonance? A little bit. I, 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 I still think I'm a good fit here. I, I don't agree that I'm not a good fit. Um, some of my frustrations, yeah. I mean, I mean, everybody's going to have frustrations. Um, yeah, it's a lot to take in right now that I came in thinking I'm going to get a job back early because 
technically by law, I'm allowed to have my job back early. Um, but Josh knows a little something. But yeah, my email to you was inaccurate. Yeah, it definitely um, wasn't accurate. Yeah. Uh, just threw so much shade at the lead pastor. Yeah, my email was to you was inaccurate. You were supposed to because he, he I have an email proof of him saying you're not you can't have your job back. And he just said, Yeah, I was inaccurate because the lawyer because they talked remember, they just spoke to a lawyer before this meeting and the lawyer's like, You shouldn't have said that. And I have proof of him saying it. And so he's like admitting it right there. And I'm like, Yeah, you're yeah. And I just threw massive shade on this guy. Um, but you know, let me let me think on it a little bit here. Um at this point I'm trying to get out of this meeting, okay? It needs to be said that my anxiety and my um panic is ri rising in my chest. I have anxiety, generalizing anxiety disorder um, and I get panic attacks. Not very often, but during these types of moments, it's starting, I can feel my body changing. I'm sweating and I need to get out of this room. Okay. I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm eluding that I, let me hear, let me think it over. I'll be in touch with you guys. That's what's happening right now. Go talk to my wife and stuff like that and just uh, adjust it a little bit, to unpack it in my brain and think about it and pray about it and stuff like that. And what were you guys thinking after Basically, what I was going to do is walk out and go call a lawyer, which I did anyways. After this, though, so if you think it's not fit, you don't want me to come back. I, I hear that. Um, so what's the next step? Yeah, so, um, uh, uh, you know, with, with that, uh, you know, we, we want, obviously, you know, obviously we're looking at this conversation so that we can, um, you know, our biggest hearts would be that we, we care for you. Mm -hmm. and the family. Well, I just want to say, I don't think that that's very evident here. Okay. But that's, yeah. you're basically firing me when I took, after paternity leave, which is illegal, by the way. And I'm, I'm pretty upset Watch about this. it. I will, it's like, I'm almost like, I shouldn't be in this meeting right now because I don't want to say things that are going to, like, offend you or piss you off a little bit. But I'm, I'm a bit upset right now. Yeah. And I'm honest, I'm telling them, I'm, on, I'm upset right now, maybe we should come back to this, right? And they don't, they're not interested in that. So, I'm not going to take uh, the fluff answers. I won't, I don't, I don't believe in that. If you just be truthful, you know, just say it how it is. I'm just asking to be truthful here. I suck at my job. That's fine. Yeah. But don't, don't be around the bush. So I'm not giving you flop answers. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not, eh? Josh, and it's not illegal. <laughs> to fire someone when they're on paternity leave? It's not actually. Oh, I didn't it's, know that. It's not illegal because the paternity leave, well, the issues we have have nothing oh, to do with Oh, this gets good. Okay. This gets good. We were firing you because you took paternity leave. That's illegal, right? Right. right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's no fluff coming from me. <laughs> but you're not, and you're not on the and, and, you, and apparently you're not. Parental. Parental. Oh, here's the loophole your lawyer told you to exploit. You're not. Apparently, you're not on parental leave. Let's talk about that, shall we? I am on parental leave. What I told them was I ran out of EI because I took my parental leave like six months into my after I signed my 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 adoption papers. So I, I, just because I wasn't accepting EI anymore because I wasn't getting it anymore doesn't mean I went on parental leave. You don't have to take employment insurance when you're on parental leave. Your parental leave is 12 to 18 months. You get it. It's just the way it is. It doesn't matter if you're getting EI or not. So their lawyer probably said, okay, yeah, if he says something about that, you need to say this. He's not. He's technically not on parental leave because he's on e, He's not on EI. That's what they're trying to do here. Listen. It's parental leave. For, and, and we didn't you know, even get into that with you because this isn't, this isn't about that for us. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I can understand, I can understand, and I totally understand, you know, that it's hard for you to hear that we do care for you and your family, and I, and I totally understand that. <laughs> so, um, can I go back, you said I'm not on parental leave? Because I'm like, what? What am I doing? Now? Uh, I thought you said it was over before Christmas. Well, I mean, the, the parental leave money ran out, yeah, it did. So, but I mean, still, so, like, I still took parental leave. You did take parental leave, but yeah. parental leave i mean i don't know the details so then shut your pie hole because you don't know the details you're literally telling me right now you don't need details but you're trying to exploit a loophole that your lawyer told you to exploit this is guys listen here they're just tr like they're covering themselves legally is all they're doing here they're trying to say well you're not on parental leave well if that's the case why don't you call me and tell me fire me then if you like they're just they're reaching here yeah. you know and you're welcome to share or not share that yeah. with us whatever that may be the you know Parental leave is the time that it, you know, that you're being paid EI to be on parental leave. And I don't know. Nope. I'm fairly confused nope. as to what happened. You are confused and don't, and just shut your mouth now. That's in my mind. I'm like, you know, you have no idea what you're talking about. With you. Yeah. And I was and, confused too, because it started, apparently from when you have a baby or adopt, you have 12 months to collect the 35 weeks. Right. You don't get to start it like I did nine months after and then collect it for 35 weeks, which they told me you could, but okay. you can't. Okay. 
And I didn't, so you have, to, you have the 12 months within that range to collect it, which I didn't know. Right. Right. So that's why I was, I'm where I am because of that. But I'm still on federally protected parental leave. So, okay. yeah. so, so then, yeah, you're really, you know, while you're off, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're done. You were done probably whatever that was. No, this guy's an idiot. This is, and if this would have come up in court, this would have been a lot. They would have laughed at the lawyer who told him to say this would have been laughed at because it's literally written right there. Parental leave. You get it. You can take up to 12 months from 12 months since your child is born or your adoption is finalized. Remember, I don't know, whatever, yeah. whatever that, um, so, you know, I mean, and, and technically, I mean, I would have said like, wow, like talk to us in the why, like, why did you wait till, you know, February or end of January to come in? Like, cause, cause. Well, yeah, know, I know, cause, cause I just Cause, cause actually, you know what? You only needed to give us four weeks notice yeah, four. and you, yeah. you, you know, by law, we, we could, we needed to yeah. give you, you know, give you know, for you to come back to your job. Yeah. And we had no issue with that. Oh, I had no issue with it, eh? You, you had no issue with giving me my job back? Cause that's what I'm doing in this meeting right here. But then you're firing uh, me. Other than there were all these other things that had nothing to do with your parental leave. Oh, yeah, had nothing to do, to yeah. do with, you know. So why wait till the end of the parental leave to tell me all this? Well, we weren't going to. Okay. Okay. So our, our actual hope was along this journey was that we were going to actually meet with you, uh, you know, March, the first week of March. Mm -hmm. And not only would you have those, you know, three months of parental leave, but our plan was, was to walk with you and give you uh, listen, listen, three and a half more months of salary after that. So you would have seven and a half months uh, to, you know, find that next next place for you, that right place for you. That that really was was the goal. So he's trying to say like, wow, we were gonna wait till the March. So you had three months plus the severance we were gonna give you plus all this stuff and to get you into that next position because we are, we are, we are awesome. <laughs> but they were too, rock and hard place because I didn't have that anymore. And then they left me hanging. Right. So, but I wasn't, yeah, but I'm not getting any leave. So it wouldn't have, or it wouldn't have mattered anyway. It wouldn't have been seven and a half. It would have been three months. It, so sad. That's true. But that's, you know, we're basing this yeah. on, we're basing this on, you know what, you know, the information you gave us that, Mm -hmm. into the agreement that you sent us, I will be gone from this time to the end of to May mm -hmm. 1st. And yeah. we thought, yeah. well, you know, we're not gonna wait till May 1st and May 2nd to set you down and have this conversation. Mm -hmm. If we're already wrestling with this, the more compassionate, the more open, the more honest way is. We're so compassionate, open and honest. Remember that, the most com more compassionate, the more open, honest way of doing this. Think, he, remember he said that in a few seconds. Is, it, is to call you in and have that meeting. Mm -hmm. I called them into the meeting, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, you know, you know, throwing off all the fluff, because you want to hear this. Mm -hmm. I thought you weren't way, giving me any that, fluff. Uh, we've been processing this, and we didn't want to, ultimately, uh, we didn't want to do it in November, just before Christmas. Aw, thanks guys. That didn't seem mm -hmm. to be the right team time when we're still sorting through in our own minds what what was best see he said by at christmas during my leave they were still sorting through that was best the lead pastor says they were talking about this a year and a half into my tenure there's conflicting messages right there we were still conflicted by december which was three months after i took my leave they were still conflicted and still talking about it then so he just admitted right there that they took their time they weren't they did that he just admitted right there that they had that they they decided when I was on parental leave to fire me, not beforehand, like they've been saying for for the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we worked through it in January and then you know, reached out to us and we had the plan to, to get you in anyway, but you just expedited that and mm -hmm. we we're negotiating a couple of our own vacations to get to work this out. Mm -hmm. So um, that that's really where it is. So it's not any flop yeah. or not wanting, you know, you know, yeah. Wow, these guys are just contracting well, I mean, themselves you, so hard. Uh, I start, I, you know, I, I sort of understand what you're saying, and being three months to get a job, but you realize that's pretty much a death sentence to be fired from a job to find another ministry job. You know that, right? That's I, like, who's going to hire me after I've been fired from a church? For get ready a, for it. Get ready for it. One year performance evaluation. 
like you know what I mean? I'm not like I'm just I'm being honest. Like who would really like? Oh, you're you're 40. You just been fired from a church. Why were you fired? What's what's the what's the deal here? So where I think I'm strong in certain areas uh, and, and 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 I'm honest in my in my assessments, I'm like, hey guys, I'm bad at admin from day one. You guys knew this before you even hired me. I mean, it's one of the biggest issues here. Um, but again, like it's a lot to lot to think about. But again, who's going to hire me? Is what I'm saying. What am what am I supposed to do? Um, this is what I do, right? So I'm like, do I go back to being a laborer, or I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying this is what I this is what my calling was, and this is what I was supposed to do. So that's a hard one to hear. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do next. So so well, lots, we, lots we, and just get ready. We would, we would give you a a re reference letter that would be appropriate. Okay, that would not say you're fired. In my opinion, this is the first lie I was talking about. You know that they they don't want anybody to know and they wanted to come across us together. So in my opinion, this is a lie. We would give you a letter that said you were not fired. They just fired me. And the, the lead pastor admits right here with his own words in his words that you're hearing with your ears that we would give you a letter saying that you were not fired. Am I overreaching here or is that a lie? If you want, we, we could do that if, if, if that's a possibility. We would like to do that. Um, just because we're saying it's a fit doesn't not a fit. It does not mean that you're a bad dude, okay? And the church shouldn't hire you, because I think in the right context, I think you can hit it. You can hit it out of the park. I think, okay, honestly, believe that, Josh. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and we would be happy to. He honestly believes that, but then he went and talked to all these pastors, and I'm basically blacklisted from leading worship in my city. So if he honestly believed that, he didn't believe it after. Not communicate this as a firing. And I would be happy to write a letter of reference for you that... Not communicate this as firing. I think you would be very happy with, okay? Somebody called me, I would just... So here, in my opinion, that's straight up almost bribery. Not extortion, because extortion is different. But it's almost like saying that if you would have just done these things, we would have given you this thing, or we can give it to you now if you want to, you know, agree with us that this is coming across as mutual. Um, in my opinion, now this is not, you know, it's conjecture, but that to me, and I don't know what you think about that, that sounds like bribery. What do you think? Just be honest, I would just be honest and say it wasn't a big year because of some elements, some elements, but I think Josh, I, I, really, I, I really believe, when I, when I said earlier, said what I said earlier, I absolutely, absolutely believe that, okay, I wasn't mm -hmm. messing, around, messing around with you, you're, you're, you're one of the best worship leaders on the stage that I know of, I love it, worship, worship, worship the energy, the energy, the passion, all of that, all of that. great, great at leading the band, amazing, amazing at leading the band, all those things, all those things are good. Um, and what we hired you to do, but we don't like you. In the right, in the right context, context, I think it would be, it would be a good fit for you. We're not, we're not saying ministry is a bad fit for you at all. That's not what we're saying. We're saying, mm -hmm. saying it just hasn't worked like you're the one people wanting it to. Mm -hmm. What hasn't worked? The place grew by like something like six, seven hundred people since I started. What didn't work? Tell me what didn't work. <laughs> I mean, I can understand if the place was, you know, losing numbers, losing tithers, losing whatever, and not not gaining steam. But it just that's not the case. Like the, the proof is in the numbers. Just go look at the numbers. I don't want to, don't want to see you at a point where you're going. I need, I need to, get to get out of here. I need a break again. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. He just said, I don't want to see a point where you have to be taking another break. They're just they keep it. They just keep putting themselves in a in a in a in a pickle. So in my opinion, there's admission right there that they're firing me for taking parental leave. Now, you be the judge of that, but that's my opinion. For three years, you're going, I can't handle this anymore. I, yeah. That's just not healthy. At all, less than three years, it's just not healthy. And, and, and that has ripple effects all the way down through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we would be happy to do that. We would not. He just said what I did, taking the leave, has ripple effects all the way down through. And that's why they're like, I, I can't, I can't, like, I don't know what else to tell you guys. Am I, am I, am I misreading this or misunderstanding this somehow? You know, obviously this conversation, we don't want to tell the congregation we fired you. That's not what we would say. We would say to them, there's been, you know, we've come to this point where there's been an agreement here and we... See? Right there. And in this whole meeting, have I ever given them the opportunity to say, yeah, this is mutual? No. And he said, we don't want to tell the congregation we fired you and we won't say that to them. Congregation of this church, are you listening? Are you listening? And are you okay with this? Or pastors saying, we don't want to tell them the truth. We want to tell them the lie or the fabricated, you know, church update. If this is it here, guys, this is the, this is the crux of this entire thing is a lead pastor of a giant congregation of a church is literally okay with lying to the people he leads. So if he's okay here, how many other times has this happened? This is the question. Am I overreacting here?
you just feel that it's not working right now. But mm. but that that's not really a conversation that we're not forcing you in that sense. Mm. It, you know, I know what it's like. I've been fired. Okay, I understand what it's like for somebody to tell me we don't want you anymore. You messed up too badly. You're out of here. Also, we're gonna do it too. So if you understand the pain and the ang anguish it causes a family and the loss of friends, and the and the and the social outcastness that happens because of it, and the and the and the social excommunication, and the and the, you know the forced excommunication from a church and losing all your network, and we're gonna do it to you. Oh man, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm useless, you know, all that sort of mm -hmm. thing. I realize I'm thankful now that I was not there anymore. Mm. Okay, so, um, and I know it doesn't feel like that now. I understand that. And uh, believe me that, you know, we didn't, we don't want, we don't want to be here like, in that sense. This mm. is not our choice. We just think it's, it's not your choice, eh? It's the, we think it's the healthiest thing for both of us. No, it's the healthiest thing for you. It's the optics thing for you. That's what it's for. It's not for the both of us. Stop. I hate that they keep projecting that this is good for you. We're doing this for you, for you, for you. That's utter lies. This isn't just another lie. This is bullshit. That's straight bullshit. Yeah, it's good for you that we moved your entire family out of the city that you lived in for 13 years, came down here, and now we're after two and a half, two and three quarter of a year, you're gone. Bye. Peace out. And now you have no friends and nobody likes you. So, and I know it's hard, and I know it's everything at you at once, and I know that seems overwhelming right now. Um, mm -hmm. Well, let me let me just... So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go hang out. I'm like trying to get out of here so badly. I pull up my phone to check the time. Figure out, you guys want to send me some stuff that you're, what next step we're on? I think, you got an extra coffee there, Ken, of the... I want to give this to you so you have something in your hand. Something in your hand. Just the, not that one, the, the, uh, that leather one. Okay, so this is the thing, this is my tinfoil hat conspiracy. They have two pieces of paper on the desk, and based on my reaction, they were going to give me one of them, depending on if I was like, yeah, yeah let's come across, like, this is, yeah, you're right, I, I suck, I, I hate it here, let's mutually agree to be parting. And then the other one where they said, if he freaks out, that's the paper. This is my conjecture, I'm not saying that this happened, but there were two pieces of paper on that desk, and then he said, no, not that one, that one. And then they handed me that one. And then this is going to be talking about severance, so we're not going to be able to talk about this. Once we come to terms that you, you're okay with, okay, and that, and that, that um, uh, and, you know, essentially, you know, you know, wherever, you know, as you're processing this, I think what's, you know, we would, we would love to walk that in confidence that, you know, until we have, you know, wherever we are settled things that, you know, you tell your wife. I don't even know what he's saying here. I don't understand how this guy is the leader of this church. I, I literally, he can't even make a sentence, but he's saying here is, Keep your mouth shut is what he's saying. Let's do this in confidence. Don't tell anybody what's happening. We need to control the optics. Tell whatever counsel you, you want to get mm -hmm. on this. Tell whatever counsel, meaning lawyer, which is yes, is exactly what he did. But keep it there. But keep it there. Don't tell anybody anything. And then, you know, um, and then, you know, let's, uh, until we have finally decided on where to go, that's what we would ask. Confidential. And I did keep it confidential. I did not say anything to anybody except for a few close friends that I trusted because I was obviously struggling. And I didn't come out to the church, didn't say anything bad about the church, anything like that. I consulted my lawyer and I kept it confidential. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have. I should have went right freaking out the door and started kicking doors down and been like, the church fired me. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I would love to meet, you know, as soon as you're available again as you process this. Mm -hmm. Um, because I know it's a lot of process now, mm -hmm. um, but wouldn't want like weeks and weeks to go by. I mean, they don't want weeks and weeks to go by. Well, too bad, brah. So sad for you. Like, what? How cocky do you have to be? How like to assume that you're like, well, yo, just come back as soon as you process this. We don't want weeks to go by. Come back to us. Like, come on, that's douchey. I'd love to sit down with you. You know, if another later in this week would work. Or early next week. Won't we'll be this week, WRW. <laughs> yeah, won't we'll be this week, bro. I, I do know of a church in Carmel looking for a part-time worship pastor. So this, the lead pastor, like I do know of a church who's looking for a part-time worship pastor. Before? No. I, I, I have to. I don't know if it's been taken yet. Mm -hmm. You're like, get out of here. I'll, I'll, I will pass you off to anybody else to get you out of here. Is what he's trying to say. Like they're trying to just like soften the blow here, and they just made themselves look like a bunch of, like, gross corporate assholes. But I, I, you know. It may be that that's 
but when I look at you, I see this creative side of you, which is really incredible, and your video side. And if there was a way that you could sort of marry those two and still lead worship, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's having a part-time position, and maybe it's you doing your video on your side, and you know, like that mm -hmm. website, and so on, or doing video for the church, and so on. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I'll double check on that one, Josh. It may not even be a good fit, and it may already fit, but I know it was a part-time position yeah. in a fairly contemporary church in town. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the kinds of things that I... You know that may be helpful yeah let me know what they would they because i can't leave i can have a year of school left if i if we have to move based on like i know i can go get a job in the u.s and like tomorrow but it's just there's so many jobs out there it's ridiculous but i'm stuck because not stuck but yeah we're here because tyson has to finish here i'm saying that my son has to finish school okay my kids have moved especially my boys who are adopted they have you know they come from trauma and we, they've moved over 30 times and he was 17 okay they've moved over 30 times and we just couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't just leave. So what was I going to do? Like, I'm, you're getting fired from church and I'm telling them, like, you know, I can't leave. And they just don't care. You know, I go on to talk about something about him that's not anybody's business. I'm trying to get out of this room so badly. One of the ISO cabs, Chris said we could use it for the radio interview. So I'll bring that back and then I'll tell you when I'm back looking. You're right, it's quite a new, right? For two, 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 two. Oh my God. It's not something that was in my Star Wars, actually. <laughs> All right, so I'm walking out of the room. Take the phone out. I'm like, my heart's racing. I'm walking out of the building. My heart's racing. I'm like, tears in my eyes. I get into my van out front, call my wife. Call my wife. And then I'm just like, I got fired. And she was like, no. And I drove away from that church for the last time. And I never looked back. And it breaks my heart because we drove by that one about a few months ago and my daughter was like, I miss that place. It made me cry. Like made, it broke my heart because the, the, what, they've done, they've, what they've done here is literally shunned a family who served almost three years, gave heart, soul. My wife served, my kids served. Everybody was there. We were all plugged in and we had friends and everything else. And they just shut it down one day because I took parental leave and they just, they didn't want to deal with it. They didn't want to come alongside a pastor who was struggling with burnout, with anxiety, and personal soul health, as far as they're concerned. And their answer to, to that was not to help that pastor. Their answer to that was to fire that person and like devastate their lives. I didn't have a job. I don't know, how was I gonna feed my kids? My wife worked part-time. This was devastating. This was a devastating blow and they didn't give a shit. And then when I, when I got a lawyer and that my lawyer said, don't talk to them, because that's the first thing a lawyer is gonna do. And then they, they lawyered up, they, they, they poured out their money and they shut me down because I couldn't afford to go any farther. I had to beg my father-in-law for money. I had, I had friends offering me to give me money and I never took it. I just, I can't do it. I gotta fight this on my own. And I did and then, then they came out with their statement that he, he challenged the legality of this and lost. Just a bunch of chachi buggers is what they were. And so that is the recording, everybody. That is what happened, that is what went down. With your own ears, you heard the multiple instances of lying and maybe low level fraud when it's trying to say, well, we're gonna give you the EI that you need, you know, we're gonna make that happen. Um, we're gonna do that. Um, willing to lie in a letter to other churches that we did not fire you. We, we do not wanna tell the congregation that we fired you. We want this to come across together with you saying, and we don't wanna tell them that, and we're happy to not do that, and all that stuff, guys. If, you can't, if you're hearing this, am I overreacting? And if you go to that church and you're listening to this, how does that change your, your perception of that, that lead pastor? that this is not the first time this has happened, people, <laughs> okay? I am one of very many people that this has happened to. This is not a first instance of anything. This is how they operate. And, and then the executive pastor and the way that he speaks to me and the way that he gaslighted me and even the, the way that he just tried, he couldn't find a word for anything because he was literally trying to find what the lawyer was telling him to say, the corporate speak, to avoid any instance of guilt whatsoever. No apologies, nothing here. And to this day, nothing. So I want you to hear this with your own ears and I want you to tell me if I'm overreacting. And if you don't think I am, I want you to reach out and I want you to ask them the hard questions. And I want you to, I want you to hold them accountable. Whether or not that means it's time for that old pastor to step down and retire maybe a little bit before he could have retired years ago anyway, but whether or not that's executive pastor stepping down, whether or not the church and the elders are coming together to apologize to me publicly and tell people, yes, we fired Josh and here's why we fired him. Go ahead, say whatever you want, but I want you to be, tell the truth. Whether or not that, that's that elder who, who, who lied by omission to my wife, who she thought was her friend, whether that person comes out and apologizes to my wife, to me, okay? 
there's a bunch of avenues where you can just be humble in spirit and grace and truth as a Christian is supposed to be and say, we did this wrong. We shouldn't have done this. Even just that speaks volumes about a church where they said, look, we made a mistake and we're sorry, but they can't because the optics matter more than anything else. And this is what's wrong with the modern day church and the amount of NDAs they have and the secrets that they keep and the, the way that they keep things from their congregation right here is proof that they're willing to do that. When they went $150,000 over budget, none of you heard about that because they froze everybody's budget till it caught up. And that's, that's a dangerous place to be for an executive pastor. It's just one next step to something maybe possibly illegal to money laundering, to being, to, to, you know, again, especially if your wife's full time too, like you're the one who holds the purse strings and you're the one who pays your wife. You're the one who sets the precedent and you're the one who sets all these salaries. I'm just saying there's too much conflict of interest at this place, too much going down. And you've heard it now with your own ears. And I would love to hear your take on this. If you still go there, there's two things you can do. You can hold the leadership accountable and ask them the hard questions at these meetings that they keep private and just ask that they call a meeting for this thing. This is big enough to call a meeting for and ask them the real questions. You ask them and they have to answer. You have to make sure they answer the questions instead of these cheap ass answers they give that we're not going to answer any questions because that is not, that is a church. That is a, a, a representative of Christ, that lead pastor and that executive pastor who are unwilling to be transparent in the, in the things that they do. And if you can't see a problem with that, then maybe you guys belong together. The other thing you can do is stop going there and start going to smaller churches and start helping other churches. Put your time somewhere else because this place doesn't deserve you because they do this to a lot of people. Because I personally know multiple people that have been hurt by this church, not just people on staff, although I have spoken to them as well. At least 10 to 15 people I personally had to hurt on behalf of the leadership by kicking them off teams and doing the things I had to do. So I personally know, I'm not saying they hurt everybody, but I know lots of people. And for those of you out there who have been hurt by this church, I'm sorry, especially if I had to take part in doing that to you, I'm, I apologize to you because that's something I should have stood on. I shouldn't have followed through with. The bigger the church, the more they hurt. Whew. So this has been part six. This has been the craziest lead up to this. I've, I'm, I'm so glad I got it out. This was the, the most therapeutic one, just releasing it to let you guys hear with your own ears. So no longer is conjecture. You get to make your own decisions based on what you heard. You heard it, you make the choice. Thank you for watching. Like or subscribe or don't, whatever, you know I don't care. But thank you for being here for this process, this journey with me. I can't express with words how emotionally touched I was for those who supported me for my GoFundMe to get this lawyer to listen to this. That, that speaks volumes that you guys are willing to fight for justice for someone you don't know. And that's what I want to do here too. And so I appreciate you. I can't express to you how, how amazing that makes me feel. You guys are incredible. And the fact that people, the fact that I'm telling a story and it's resonating with a lot of people makes, is a big deal. And so the next thing that we're going to move on with is we're going to do a documentary on this. We're going to do a documentary on how the church hurts volunteers, pastors, leaders, and pastors, wives, and pastors, kids. And we're going to do a full on full fledged documentary on what they're doing wrong and how we can fix this thing together. So if you're in that with me, let's do this together. Thank you again for everything you've done in this journey that you come along with me. I've never could have believed that we would have been here. Never at all. Never would have thought I would have an audience that I have. And it's, you know, uh, I'm so appreciative of you and I'm, I, I'm nothing without you guys listening and fighting with me. So I hope that, I hope that any justice that you seek comes your way too, because this has been really, really, really good for my family, for me, um, for this problem, or, and, for, and for justice in general, and for, for holding this place accountable. You know, I don't want you to ever reach out to a place, and even if you know what this place is, and say anything or anything, but this place does need to be held accountable. And if, if, if news media and people want to start picking this up, I'm happy to talk about it. And if they sue me, it's just going to get a little bit more fiery because everything has to come out and all the people and all the NDAs and things that they've had beforehand, all the stuff's going to have to come out. I challenge churches that have NDAs to release the NDAs, cut them, shred them and say, you can tell your story because the only way that this is going to be fixed is once churches become transparent and until, until churches are willing to become transparent with everything, you, I, I can't talk to you. So. Thank you.